Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 210. And today we're talking all about those important relationships with your administrators. I hope you guys are having a great start to the school year. Maybe you've been in class for the last couple of weeks, or maybe class is still a couple of weeks away. This is the time to get with your principals, get with your building leaders, figure out what their goals are, how you can support them. And today we have a fantastic guest, a returning guest onto the show. I want to bring on today my good friend, Nick Amaral. Nick, welcome back to Ask the Tech Coach. How have you been, my friend? Been good, Jeff. Excited to be back here and uh, get to chat with you and see how things were going and uh, share kind of the new things on my plate. So been getting ready for the new year. You know, uh, we got PD on my district uh, that's been kicking off and we're getting ready to roll with our summer uh, Ed Camp style thing that we put together and then uh, get rolling with uh, whatever the new projects are <laughs> in you, our you, role. You have certainly been rocking the professional development over the summertime. For those who uh, might not have been around when we were co-hosting this show together, uh, who is Nick Emerald? <laughs> so uh, Nick is a, I'm, I'm actually, it's a, a kind of a jack of all trades role here. So it's a quasi uh, tech coach meets uh, PD manager, if you will. So I oversee the professional development program for our school district, a, a two high school, regional high school district. Um, and, you know, doing all the, kind of the, the things that most, uh, maybe a couple roles do, putting the, the calendar of events together, facilitating and running some workshops, um, and just kind of being that voice to meet district building goals and objectives. So my goal is to try to bring what the directors and administration want uh, and uh, help the teachers meet those, those goals. So I'm glad that you're here and I wanted to do this topic <laughs> with you. Let me see if I can kind of frame this conversation here. You consider yourself an instructional coach, correct? I do. Yes. Uh, but you don't work in a building. You work more at the central office level and, and you're in buildings. I, I know that, but, but you're more central office type. Is that fair to say that is fair to say and is it fair to say that you are not an administrator or you are an administrator and i am not an administrator so my teachers like to almost say i'm the liaison between the teachers and the administrator it's from administration team the voice of the voiceless you got you got it there you go so as somebody who is both a certified teacher you know, English background, I know. Um, but you're in those meetings, right? Like you are the one that's working with administration. You said, you know, you're, you're in charge of PD, you're setting calendars. You're the one that's in those meetings with those administrators to say, what are the district goals? What are your building goals? What do you want to see? Is that a fair way to assess what your day to day looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm part of the the leadership team as far as uh, sitting in on those meetings and being able to listen to, you know, what are the goals and objectives? Um, what, you know, focuses do we have going into maybe the new school year and, and sending out those surveys to assess and things like that. And then bringing that information back to the teachers. But the other part that I like too is, you know, bringing, like you said, the voice of the voiceless, going to the teachers and finding what are the things you need, you know, uh, to get your job done, to make it your life easier, uh, to solve any issues that you have. And then I'm able to bring that back to the administrative team and then say, hey, here's also the other things we need to hit from the teacher side, or I should say even staff, you know, I work with nurses and administrative assistants and all the way down to uh, a maintenance crew, if they have tech and uh, issues or things they need. And I'm sort of like that project manager on the side. All right, let me see what I can do to, to get those things fixed. But you also are in the classrooms. How many buildings do you support? What does your district look like? Sure. So we're a two high school district, uh, you know, roughly at 2,500 kids or so, 3,000 kids, somewhere in between there. Um, and then we have a bunch of little feeder towns, you know, that, that send to between the two schools. Um, 
And then each of those towns have their respective, you know, we'll say uh, elementary and middle school, you know, districts. Uh, so it's not a massive district, uh, you know, and by any stretch. I know, you know, this is probably roughly a, a rather small one, but overall, but I work with all of the staff, you know, so that's the one thing. I'm one person. We don't have any tech coaches. So I kind of, like I said, from the get-go, it's kind of that quasi role. So, um, you know, I could be working with, you know, 400 people if needed, all of the administrative assistants, secretaries, nurses, instructional aides, all of those. I'm, I'm the voice of the PD side for all of those people. And I think the interesting thing is how long is your contract? Are you 10 month or 12 month? Yeah. So I'm a 12 month independent contract. So technically, you know, renews every year. So uh, I think I'm doing a good job. I never kind of sweat it, but uh, you know, it's always scary kind of thinking about the new year coming up. This is a typical coach, right? And over the last couple of weeks, we've had a number of, of, you know, tech coaches coming on, instructional coaches coming on. We've had instructional coaches with one building. We've had instructional coaches with 50 or 60 buildings. We've had instructional coaches who literally have to get on an airplane in Canada to go to another school that they work with and they stay there for a few days. I love that the term instructional coach is so broad. What I hope that we get out of today's show is it is all about these relationships. And we're going to talk today about the relationships and probably one of the most important relationships that we can have, which is the relationship between the instructional coach and our building leaders. Now, Nick, you have an opportunity as central office to learn not only what the district goals are through their strategic plan, but also what the building goals are. I'm sure that you've had, uh, even maybe by now, conversations with your building principals. You said you support two high schools, so maybe multiple administrators you've had conversations with to figure out what are their goals. Um, What do those meetings look like for you? How does that work? And what are some of the things that you're looking forward to supporting this year in your classrooms? So, you know, as you said, so, you know, we, I have a couple different administrators, you know, from the vice and assistant principals up to the, uh, the principal himself at each building. Um, and we sit down through a lot of informal meetings, I would say, throughout the beginning of the end of the previous school year to the beginning, you know, through the summer and whatnot, uh, into the beginning of the year. And we go over, you know, just focuses. Um, what are we focusing on? What are you hearing from your teachers? You know, one of the things that's worked out really well has just been the way my summer professional development kicks itself off has lent itself to me being able to listen to the teachers throughout these sessions um, and then go back to these informal meetups with the principals and say, hey, you know, here's what's come up. These are things that teachers and staff are addressing. Um talk to me about where you want to go this year, goals and focuses that you have, and maybe we can address some of these issues or things that, you know, staff are looking for um, within these goals and objectives for our year. So, you know, again, a lot of it is starts off informally, and then we move into more formal, I would say, central office meetings where, it, you know, the curriculum director is usually brought in on that. The superintendent has a voice in some of these, you know, goals and focuses throughout the year. And, and it's important that we understand our role as instructional coaches is not tech, even though we're tech coaches, you know, we're instructional coaches. For, like our goal is not infuse Google in the classroom. Our goal is let's meet their goals. Let's meet their standards. Let's meet their objectives through the use of these digital learning tools. And so today is really dedicated to our instructional coaches network. Now we have a amazing uh, free membership program that you have over here on ask the tech coach. You can head over to ask the tech coach.com scroll on over to the bottom. We have a Facebook group. We have a LinkedIn group. We even have a, a digital learning leaders group, lots of different ways that you can learn how to support yourself, learn how to support your programs. And Nick recently, somebody was in our Facebook group and they asked two important questions And the conversation thread in there got pretty heavy and pretty awesome. And I wanted to build a show about it, and I'm happy that you're on here. There were two questions that came up today, and I want to take a moment to answer these through. Nick, what was the first question that uh, was brought up in our Facebook group this week? What do you think district and building leaders should be watching for in tech in the upcoming school year? And And, go ahead. And and. This is an important question because it assumes that leaders are focusing on tools. And we're going to dissect what this means as we go through today. But but 
the second question I think is even more important. Nick, what's that second question that was asked this week? Yeah, and question number two was, how should leaders address professional development this year in regards to technology integration? All right, so let's back up here and kind of go through here. Um, why is it important? that instructional coaches work with administrators, especially at the beginning of the year? Why do we need to have these relationships? You know, one of the biggest things is that your goal as a tech coach, you know, an instructional coach is to help support the teachers uh, in meeting whatever those district or building goals are. So that's one of the biggest pieces there. So you having that conversation with your administration is able to kind of be that liaison and bridge that gap between these two groups. Um, I think, you know, what happens with a lot of people, especially my teachers, is they almost feel like not, not just my administration being a spy in the building, but it's almost like they almost feel like you are. So you're finding ways to kind of quell those um those issues, those, uh, those feelings that maybe they feel like, you know, your, your staff is out to get them. And the goal here is to kind of just bring everyone onto the same page and address common issues, uh, for the district that, um, are just there to, you know, to, to make learning better for students inside the classroom, a better learning experience. And it's important that we know that. And this is why I asked you the question at the top of the show of, are you an administrator, right? Like it's easy to be aligned with the principal and to walk in and say, Hey, you know, your, your boss wants to see this. I'm here to help you. Clearly that will turn off a teacher if they think that you're a spy. So no, Mm -hmm. and you're not there to observe them. You're there to support them. So having the, a relationship at the beginning of the year to know what their goals are, know what they're working on, but also be able to build those relationships with teachers. That's really important. The problem is, especially right now, you know, what we've been doing all these shows, recommending teachers set up, recommending coaches set up times with their principals. But here we are in the middle of August. All of these principals are taking their vacation days they're they're breathing a little bit you know they they ended the school year they went into planning meetings they went into interview seasons they went into um you know administrator powwows or whatever you want to call those things that you know that the district puts together and now they're the ones that are decompressing before the new school year and here we are as coaches saying let's meet and talk about it so how should we be approaching principals at the beginning of the school year should it be before the year starts after the year starts, when should we have these meetings to set up our school years? So I know what's worked for me. And I think, you know, addressing this before the school year is one of the biggest pieces. So, you know, that can be informally. This doesn't have to be a super formal process. You know, I think making it informal as a way that you can preemptively say, hey, here are some topics. This is what I'm looking to address. How can uh, some of these things fit some of your goals and objectives for the year, what you're thinking toward next year? So, Definitely um, before the school year starts throughout the summer as they're in and they're out. That's why I think, like you said, you know, you, you brought up a good point. Then they're not they may not be here. So if you keep that as an informal process until maybe, you know, the week school before school comes in, when you have some sort of those uh, leadership team uh, meetings, you know, we do uh, a little kind of leadership uh, get together the week before that school officially starts. That becomes a nice venue then if you've already had these pre-discussions, these informal meetings for your principals then to make it and address some of the topics that you guys have been discussing with the rest of the leadership team as well, vice principals, assistant principals, and even supervisors, whoever's part of that that group, because it'll start to trickle down from there. And I think it's important that those meetings be framed the right way. It's easy for you to go to your principal and say, what do you want me to do this year? Uh, they might not know. They might even give you the wrong answer. I think when having those meetings, it's important to basically say, Nick, what are your goals? Good. How can I help you meet them? And as long as you're putting yourself in the position of I'm here to support your goals, then that's now what my routine is, right? Like if the principal is looking to go A, B and C and you're looking for LMNOP, it doesn't work. But I'm here to, you know, to be pushing digital learning skills through your goals, A, B and C. And, you know, Nick, you're in a high school. Too, in fact, you've got principal goals, you've got assistant principal goals, you've got department supervisor goals. That's a lot more ground to cover than just being in an elementary building where you've got one one principal. 
who's got goals or, you know, maybe goals per grade level. What is it like for you to be working with not only just a building principal, or I'll say in your case, two high school building principals, but you've got, I would assume a science supervisor, a math supervisor or an English super. I mean, do you find that both buildings roughly have the same building goals? Cause you know, a superintendent makes goals for both of their high schools. Like Mm -hmm. how does all that work? Do you, do you see some familiarity in those two buildings or are they completely on different planets? (laughs) So, yeah, it's a funny question. So I always have this, you know, joke with uh, central office admin and, and when we, you know, curriculum director and superintendent, when we have these discussions and I say, you know, although we have, and we try to drive like goals, you know, from the top down, from uh, the curriculum director and the superintendent, if they have ideas and and things like that, focus topics, Um, you know, the cultures of buildings are different. And then you're going to find as someone like, you know, I'm sure most of the tech coaches here, you know, walking through, they can tell you the difference in culture between the staff and how people react and the way the supervisors work and things just don't work out the same way. What I will say is, you know, what's worked well for me uh, in our district and just, you know, how we start to set things up is I've been very close to my curriculum director um, and he and I, uh, you know, have established this kind of rapport that we talk about what our district goals are. And and he looks at me as someone to to listen to for feedback and to what I've gathered over the course of the year. And then he says, Hey, here are our topics from last year. Here are our district goals. We usually try to keep it to, to three. I, I've heard districts that do five or more. And then I'm just like, I don't know how you meet all those, but we try to keep it to three and we say, which of these are we keeping? Why, which of these are we getting rid of? Why? And then we usually then bring in the principles into that discussion after that. Um, but like you said, you know, although we have this top down approach, And we have this focus from the curriculum director or your superintendent, whoever, Um, as you start to make your way through, you start to notice differences and you'll notice those differences from tech skills of staff between buildings to just what are particular needs between departments, you know, a science department at one high school versus the other may have different needs or focus areas because that's just what has come up. So as you said, from the get go, so much of us in our role isn't tech based, the tech kind of makes its way into the instruction piece. And you need to figure out how what you set up and do as far as professional development is there to meet those overarching goals and objectives. I've never seen a principal sit down with a coach and say, I want my coaches to bring in more wakelet. But I've seen principals sit down with coaches and say, how do we do morning announcements? What can we do in the field of video? And then the coach says, oh, how about X, Y, and Z, right? Now, do you find, I don't don't want to put you on the spot here, but Mm -hmm. do you find that when you're building and your district have these goals, it's a collaborative effort where they say, here's goal A, and you might say, here's how we can meet this through digital learning or, you know, whatever that path is, or is it more, Nick, go do this? Yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely more the first. And, and one of the things that we've done, and I, maybe that's just me and how I've kind of gone about it, you know, I think in the beginning, my role has changed, you know, for to kind of just kind of let everyone a little bit of a backstory piece here with my position is it started more as the technology staff development coordinator. Mm-hmm. And then it has since changed because what the curriculum director and myself sat down and had the discussion, I said, you know, I'm a certified teacher. It's not just about tech. My goal is whatever kind of the pedagogy and the teaching that we want to happen, the tech will fit its way in there. So what we've come to see now is what happens with these district goals or, you know, goals of certain principals and supervisors is it's more pedagogy and teaching based. Um, or there's just a fo- focus thing. So, for example, we have one principal at a high school who came to me and said, hey, I really want to see more PBL project based learning activities happening in the classroom. And for me, I was like, OK, that's awesome, because now you're not coming to me and saying, hey, Nick, I want you to work on so and so as far as, you know, integrating an app. Like you said, I want to see more Google in the classroom. No, those are p- bits and pieces of you know, apps and tech are bits and pieces of project-based learning. So let's work with the teachers on this teaching idea, right, of PBL, of differentiation, of gamification, and whatever it is that the, that a focus is that maybe a principal likes. And now my job is, okay, now where do I infuse the tech and how do I work with the teachers in order to kind of build their skills in that, that kind of that vicinity of the teaching? 
How often should coaches be meeting with principals, especially at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I, I, you know, it definitely has to be more than once and just enough to keep them on um, on track of whatever the goal is. You know, I think if you only meet one time and then you're not meeting again to the next month, you spend more time recapping, <laughs> right, things that you've talked about. Uh, and what your focuses are. And I know most people dislike that in meetings, right? Like, oh man, we went into it and we spent the first 10, 15 minutes recap. So it's got to be more than once. Twice is a good number, if not kind of um, once a week. Or again, just keeping, uh, you know, what I generally do, I'll shoot out an email here or there after we meet, keep them up to date. So, you know, I may say, all right, we met, we may not meet for another week or so, um, every other or whatever, maybe the goal is for the month. But I'll shoot out that email and say, hey, here, here's where I am with what we were talking about. Here's what I've come across. Here's what I found. Here's what I started to put together. And then I send that out. Um, you know, a little kind of piece that I'm working on. I'm trying to help our HR department with new teacher orientation. I always do that every year um, and establish kind of that schedule. And I wanted to put together just gathering all the stuff that new teachers get and new staff get and that they have to learn throughout the year. And I want to compile that all into a nice organized uh, Google drive folder. So I had this pre discussion with our principals. I sent out an email following up, Hey, here's what I've created. I'd also like to drop in your welcome letters, send that to me, tell me what forms and files you think your staff need. And then let's also expand this now to all of our staff, everything that they're looking for, all those forms and files throughout the year. How can we get that in one organized place for everyone versus, you know, bits and pieces from different staff sites. So you can see just that mentality became an initial meeting. This came up as something in an initial informal discussion. I followed up with an email a week later. Here's where we are. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm looking for you to do. What other pieces do you need me to do? And that's kind of what we're talking about here, Jeff, in that progression. <clears throat> Let's talk about the topics, right? The, recently on our Facebook group, as we mentioned earlier, the question really came up. And we've talked about this a couple of times today already. Should building leaders be focused on tech? I, I've had instances in, in many districts working with administrators where they say, and how does the tech fit in? And that's where you don't want to push back, but you have to then, for me, I rephrase the question to, from what, where does the tech fit in to what are the digital learning skills we're trying to help support in our classrooms? We are not, quote, the tech, right? The tech is the guy that walks in and changes the light bulb or fixes the keys on a Chromebook. So in our Facebook group, when somebody says, should building leaders be focused on the tech, what's the right answer for this? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I think they have bigger things to address so that what they should be addressing then ends up beating, uh, you know, focusing on standards and how they're best going to address student learning. Everything comes back to student learning and the experience in the classroom and then how teachers are meeting those standards and those experiences. So, um, you know, how are they going to address teachers to be creating, innovating and doing whatever, you know, what do they need? What do staff need from the principal now to make that also happen? At the beginning of the year, the principal gets up and says, these are our three goals. Our job is to work throughout the year to help the teachers meet those goals. And some of those goals might be raising a math standard. That's why we have math coaches. Could be raising a science standard. That's why we have science coaches. We as instructional coaches for digital learning, tech coaches, TOSA, whatever the word of, of the day is, we are here to help meet those goals. And that's how we can form those relationships with our teachers, form those relationships with our principals. And that gets us to our, our last topic here, Nick, which is, you know, what is the purpose of professional development? And when we're looking at a school building, we have three different levels. We have large group, medium group, and small group. And our large group is our building de you know, professional development. Our medium group is those grade level meetings, department level meetings. And our small group, of course, is one-to-one -one with teachers. I have this theory and I'd love to get your thoughts on it because I know you work at all those different levels that, you know, at the beginning of the year, there's always that first faculty meeting. And that's usually where the principal says, here's the roadmap. Here's the goals. Here's what I want you to meet. At that point, the, the, the principal should go and here's Nick to talk all about it. This is now a commercial. This is not professional development. You're not 
you're not developing teachers in five minutes at a staff meeting. You're developing them over the course of a year. So when they say, here's Nick and Nick gets up with his PowerPoint slide or <laughs> in, in his jam board, the idea here is here's the overall topic. And the commercial is next week, we're going to be meeting as grade levels where we're going to figure out what this looks like in fourth grade, what this looks like in math, where this looks like in special ed from there, those medium groups become a commercial for, and when can we come into your classrooms and do this together? When can we plan those lessons? And I find that a lot of times principals go and Nick's going to do this 20 minute PD at the beginning of the, of the year. And that's it. And there's no connection between what does the dog and pony look like versus how does he get into the classroom? And I've, you know, obviously like we've got coaches that give out their booking forms and their calendars and all of that's great. But if a principal and a coach aren't on the same page, the large group PD is never going to translate into the medium group PD is never going to translate into those meaningful one-to-one relationships. You should be in the classroom only after the teacher has heard it from the principal at a big meeting, talked about it in their grade level meetings and started to come up with ideas of, oh, this is how I can do this as a teacher. This is how I can do this as a fourth grade teacher. Now, when you're in the classroom, it's, oh, here's how I can do it. And here's my lessons. Nick's the guy that's going to build this with me and help me out. What are your thoughts on that? How do you set yourself up for success in the classroom through professional learning opportunities of all levels because i know you do this constantly yeah so i i mean look you i could talk about pd <laughs> as a topic for five more episodes if we wanted to uh, but um i one of the things i think has you know has worked uh for me and what's kind of driven that piece is uh you know the pre-discussions that talk about like you said so the principal at top down there's a there's a focus there is a preemptive um focus and drive in my district where they make note of you know pushing you know Nick's covering this, Nick's talking about this, he's going to be d- d- doing this. So there is this effort amongst all kind of administration from my uh, director of technology to the building principals to the superintendent, which I appreciate um, as putting that focus on me for a lot of the staff learning. So that's been nice. Now, what works out really well is, uh, too, it has been when I sit down and I talk to my principals, when I talk to district admin, I say, here's what I'm doing. I always give them a highlight of what my topics are for the summer or for the, the school year as I'm kind of building workshops in or, re, you know, re building them, as you know, as you kind of new topics come up and you have new focuses, um, I send it to them. And then what they generally do is they come back out and they'll say, Hey, keep in mind, you know, one of our goals for this year is assessments. And Nick has got a couple sessions come up where he's going to be talking about, you know, formative assessments on this day, summative assessments on this. So they shoot out these, these emails. They shoot out these reminders. I appreciate um, what works out well, too, is when they have these cabinet meetings. Uh, this has worked well for our district. Our principals then sit with the curriculum director and all the supervisors in our district, and they get together for cabinet level meetings. And then they share them again, these ideas or these focuses that they have. They tell them, Hey, here's the discussion I had with Nick. Here are the topics or hit focuses for some of his PD sessions that he's leading. Or if I'm bringing someone in, why I'm bringing that group or that person in to run a PD session. And then he shares it with them. And then the supervisors go back and they turn key this information back to their staff and they tell them why they want them to attend that. Um, what you know works out really well for me too is when I have these conversations with supervisors and I say, look, we, you know, I want to get all the staff on board. I want to work specifically with what the science department needs to make PBL or gamification work or math. We have these kind of more intimate discussions, and then they tell me what they need, and then I go back to the drawing board and I make sure that that specific PD or tips or tricks or best practices work for those departments as well. So then what they do is they go back to their teachers and they say, hey, here's what we need. Nick's providing this, this opportunity. What days, what time works best for you so that everyone in our department can attend? And then they come back and I kind of reschedule that event. So you can kind of just see top down how it's kind of worked for me in my district and how I go about scheduling a lot of these events. But um, that trickle down effect then turns from 
discussions to meetings with all different levels of admin teams down to supervisors and then trickles its way from, uh, you know, small group to large group meetings where it's building meetings and the principals may say this down to small group kind of workshops. And then uh, I usually design some one-to-one -one meetings and little kind of smaller things, uh, online modules and things like that, that then help facilitate that one step further. But there's a lot of hustle involved in your position. There is, there's a lot of, and, and I, but I think that's with everything, right? I think so much of that is you got to get a lot of people on board. You have to be personable. You, you have to build relationships and you have to, you know, teachers and staff need to know that you're addressing th their concerns and you're only looking to make their job better, you know? And, and that's been one of my focuses with my position is I, I don't want to just be a tech person. I don't want to just be a professional development person because it always has to come back to learning in the classroom. So how am I more of a learning and development coordinator? And what am I doing to address all these people's needs? <clears throat> Not a tech person. I'm here to make your life better. I think that's the hashtag for today. I go. think that's the, the, the t-shirt that we can make up. Um, you know, there's a lot of great stuff happening out there in the world of instructional coaching. I urge you, if you're listening to this, um, not only like and subscribe this, hit that subscribe button, share this with your other instructional coaching friends, but definitely get into our instructional coaching group. You can head on over to askthetechcoach.com. Scroll to the bottom. We have got some great opportunities for you guys. Not only that, but we're going to be getting back into our live shows as we get through August and into September. Probably going to be doing two live shows uh, a month, doing our what we call our coaching conversations, bringing up conversational topics that are meaningful to you guys. We've been doing that throughout the summer and would love to have you as part of our newsletter as well. Nick, uh, where do we go to learn more about the great things that you're doing in New Jersey? Cool. So you guys can reach out to me uh, on Twitter at nmrledu. Um, and I'm always posting things about what I'm doing and uh, you can track some of the events and, and PD think work that I've been messing around with. It has been great catching up with you. Uh, continued success, everything that you're doing. Um, I know you're doing some great stuff in New Jersey. And please pop on back every now and then. Love to have you back on the show, my friend. Love to be on, Jeff. I appreciate it. And that wraps up this episode of Ask the Tech Coach, episode number 210. Next week, we've got a great episode coming on. Our good friend, Steph Howell, is bringing some friends on. She's talking about her 90-day coaching plan. If you are walk walking into your district this year without a plan, you need to rethink that. So Steph's going to be here next week talking all about what you're going to do in the first month, the second month, the third month, and we've got some great downloads for you guys to check out. Head on over to askthetechcoach.com today. Check out all of our great templates, downloads, all of that wonderful stuff. And I hope you guys are having a great start to the school year. And that wraps up this episode of Ask the Tech Coach on behalf of Nick and everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.